No, Chelsea have been Chelsea. You know, I mean, I mean their reputation, the stature of the club. I mean, everybody's saying. I mean, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't get relegated. They shouldn't. You get relegated for a reason. I mean, you didn't get enough points. I mean, that's just as simple as that. It's not rocket science. So they did have a good season, but I definitely think with the playoff system, it gives uh, teams like your big club that second bite of the cherry to stay up. And we knew that was going to be a challenge because I mean, they had international players. I mean, they had all like national, a lot of national team players and um, stuff like that. But again, the greatest thing that Bruce had as a manager was fear nobody. I mean, he, he always had that. Anybody that came, it was, I mean, we knew Chelsea Football Club were coming to Aston Park with all their superstars and stuff like that. And um, no, and then when, I mean, when he matched people up man for man, it, it, he's like, if you, it goes to show you they're not superhuman. I mean, it's, it used, he, he was just fantastic at his team talks, his tactical stuff, his tactical awareness of what we were going to do in certain times in the game. Um, the overall game and his game plans worked. I mean, again, I started out left midfield, then came into centre midfield after 15, 20 minutes. But he said, I mean, we knew Chelsea would know that. Um, and then, I mean, hey, the two goals again, big time. I mean, Trevor again, chipping in, Bernie chipping in and going to Stamford Bridge with a 2-0 lead. I, I'll be honest, I think some of us even in the back of our head thought it might still not be enough because I think Chelsea beat Blackburn 6-0 or something like that mm-hmm. in one of the playoff games. But again, Bruce, we, we, we went there. He knew it was going to be backs against the wall at Stamford Bridge and it kind of was. I, I just remember that day, the Pally Mogger, but particularly Pally. Pally was incredible that day. I mean, my God, they threw everything at us other than the kitchen sink. And Pally was just, oh, he was incredible. He yeah. was quite a atmosphere, wasn't it? Oh, it, it, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, I've been, I've been, I've been fortunate. I've been to a lot of like uh, big games in cities like Celtic Rangers and Everton Liverpools, and I've actually been down to Boca Juniors and River Plate, and that's like a place you don't want to go. Yeah. And that reminds me when I went to the when I went to that game in Argentina. That that game reminded me of that the Middlesbrough Chelsea game because yeah. it was crazy. And was back then, like bottles flying about and things, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, back then the 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 the, the, the football joys as we used to call them. They, could, they probably couldn't even name the lineups of the team. They, they weren't there. They were there just to fight. Um, it was a shame uh, after the game of what happened, but it still didn't deter the Middlesbrough fans celebrating, and it definitely didn't deter us from celebrating either. That's when we got back on the bus because straight after that, um, I think we flew out to America and um, just done some little tour thing of games. But it was on the bus. Bruce brought his briefcase in and emptied his briefcase onto one of the tables, and it was just full of like uh, money and envelopes for all the players that uh, we had to bet. So yeah, it was good. Um, that, that was a pleasant surprise because, like I said earlier, we'd all forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think when you were running off the pitch, didn't you end up jumping on? Was it Colin Cooper's back or something like that? It was strange. I, 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 I jumped on Colin Cooper's back. He probably wouldn't want me to do that today. I'd probably kill him. But they, um, yeah, and if you look at that video, I mean, if you look at the video, as I jump on his back and I'm going down the tunnel, there's a bottle that smashes right by my foot. So there is, because I jump, <laughs> me and Coops actually jump while I'm on his back. And um, yeah, so, but yeah, it was, um, it was good times. It was, a, it was a great celebration of the day, that's for sure. Yeah, and there was definitely a little bit of trouble, I think, in the crowd as well after even when the players had gone off the pitch. It was a crazy day. Yeah, there was. It was, um, it was not, it's, it's never a good sight or it's never good to hear that because we were hearing things in the dressing room while we were having to wait. The, um, there was a lot of trouble outside. We knew there was going to be trouble on the way in because the fans, the Chelsea fans, were they were trying to play, they were rocking the bus. And our, some of our younger guys, they were just shitting themselves. I mean, they, they wanted to stay in the bus. They didn't even want to go yeah. in the dressing room. Yeah, I can well imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so looking back over your sort of career then, what, what would you say was the most memorable game that you've ever played in? That's a tough one, I think. Um, I would probably say, I'd probably say the Bradford one for what it kind of meant, um, what happened, and obviously because personally I scored the winning goal and stuff. And the part that most people don't know is I shouldn't have even played in the game either because I was injured. Yeah. So it, to, to get through the injury, go play like, and to, I mean, I mean, my son watches that game quite a bit now, and. 
I mean, he's he's like I should have scored like three goals that day, maybe even four. I missed I missed some sitters. Thank God I scored one because people don't remember the sitters. Thank God, because yeah. I missed some missed some howlers. So I did, but um, for, that 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 nah, that game sticks to mind. That's for sure, the Bradford game. Yeah, and is there any particular and, game? And, sorry, go and on. The, 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 sorry, in the Everton, the Everton Cup games at home, they were something special as well. Yeah, there were some good games there, wasn't there? I remember actually, yeah. It was yeah. four four yeah. 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 Uh, so, like, as a sort of a fan then, what would you say was the most memorable game that you've actually seen? Well, I was at, I was at the the Villa game when we went to the Tennis Cup final because we'd never been to the Cup uh, finals before. So, that was... Um, I think that was one, but just because of the euphoria of us going to Wembley was like uh, the, the 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 enjoyment and the pleasure and just the legend and people inside the stadium after the game was incredible that the people were going to Wembley. So, which is ironic because I mean I was still a player, I was still uh, stuck, but I was on the injury list. I went to Wembley and then come home because my twins were sick, so I didn't even get to see the Wembley game. And I think Ian Baird as well. Ian Baird went to Wembley. He was injured as well. And he left as well because his kids were sick. Yeah. I don't even can see it there, but I've got my, uh, my scarf from there. The final there. No, you have. Yeah. There from the 1990 final. Brilliant. It's a shame he obviously couldn't uh, get the win, but it was our first yeah. time Wembley. Yeah, like I say, that, that was the first time there. So, um, when when you saw you were playing, then what would you say it was the um, any particular team that you'd actually dreamt of playing for? I know you just mentioned about Celtic. Not really. I mean, my love for Celtic actually. I mean, if anybody asks me who I support, I actually say Middlesbrough. I mean, I don't even say Celtic anymore. Um, and I I don't I don't even know look for Celtic results. I'm not a massive fan. If I upset people here, I don't mean to, but I'm not a massive fan of Scottish football at all anyway. So. Um, I, I'm not. It's a two-horse race. It has been for since, like, even I, before I was born, or maybe Aberdeen back in the seventies. But um, so no, I'm I'm very happy where where I played. I'm very happy of what I've done and achieved. Um, um, nobody can take it away from me. That's for sure. Um, but no, not really. I mean, I, I know everybody would say they want to play for uh, all the big six and stuff like that. But the big six went around then. Um, I've, I was, I was very happy and content at Middlesbrough Football Club. I really was. I had the chance to go to Charlton. Um, and funny enough, Lenny was the manager there. And he tried to sign me, uh, 87. And I just, no, the, the lights of London didn't lure me. No, I didn't fancy going moving to London at all. Yeah, I know you did try a little spell at Darlington, sort of round about that end of your Middlesbrough town. Uh, how did that sort of come about then? That came, Tony McAndrews. Uh, Tony McAndrews was um, obviously an ex-player, ex-mate at Middlesbrough with me and a very close friend. And just to try and get back into game shape, we agreed that i go there and um, I went on loan. And I, I, I knew anyway that, because I'd had the ordeal of Rochdale thing, so I always knew every time I was going to play, I was going to be really kind of protecting my knee which I don't think you should have to do that, just, just for your general health being anyway. Yeah. Uh, but um, I went, I was very grateful to them. Um, so I was, uh, but I, I, I knew in the back of my head it just wasn't going to work. I mean, uh, I, I'd give it a go, I'd, I'd try. And, and when you think about it, I mean, the, the, the lower leagues you go to, the tough, the, I mean, physically the tougher it becomes. I was kind of really throwing myself into the lion's den Especially with the makeup, of, the makeup of myself as a player, and then playing in Division Three or Four, I mean, there's some hatchet men down there that you've never even heard of. Yeah. And um, but I will say though, one thing it did do for me was make me realise um, how lucky we really were as well. I mean, because I went and played it with uh, Whitby as well, and that really was an eye opener to me. Was Whitby, uh, Whitby Town Football Club because, my God. I mean, I was playing with guys who had just come off a shift of 16 hours, like a Sparky of bricklayers and stuff like that. And these guys, I mean, they, these guys really, really played for the love of the game. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, yeah. And really good football players. I mean, some of them, were, I remember a couple of guys were really good. And I'd say to them, why don't you give it a chance? 
And they're like, why give up a make? They were on great money, um, just as much money as I was probably making. And then um, they were like, but I get to get the game I play. And they just didn't want to risk losing everything they'd already had. And, but that really made me stand up and realise that there's people out there that <clears throat> love the game and they're better than some of the players playing, but they're playing for the love of the game. So, yeah, it was... Um, that was that was that was a really one that uh, sticks in my mind was uh, Whitby Town. So yeah. it was won it won the league that year as well. Though, so I, I got a medal for that as well. <laughs> I think I, I think I ended up playing like sweeper or something like that. It was funny. So, but it was it was good. They, they got the guys that were Whitby Town. They were fantastic. They were all a great bunch of lads. Yeah. So like it was mentioned before, like over your career, you made yourself you sort of you made your name as a bit of a tough tackling midfielder. Who would you say was your favourite midfield partner like to play get play with? Oh, um, I suppose. Um, well, I, I didn't get to play with Matt Brennan as much as I would have liked to, because I thought Matt Brennan was a. Don't think he got a lot of credit, but he was a wonderful football player. I mean, he really was. Um, but and then Dean Glover and I played quite a bit together in centre midfield, which was a kind of odd centre midfield relationship because. You've got one hard man with another kind of supposedly hard man in me. And it was like, normally you would have a playmaker and somebody else who would just run around and kick the hell out of everybody. Yeah. And that, that's when the first time Bruce ever said to me, when we when we bought Matt Brennan, and um, I think it was the first game of the season against Norwich, and I was doing some stuff. And I think I tried to ping this ball like from like from left to right. And at the time, Bruce said to me, what, what are you doing? And I went, what do you mean? And he brought the, the he brought the incident up, and I went. Well, I, I I can make that pass. And he went, no, 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 no. He says, you just get the ball and give it to him. He yeah. says, because that's why I bought him, and he'll do that pass. And I'm like, well, I can make that pass. And he went, I know you can. He says, but he can make it more than you can. And I was like, shit, yeah. that's not nice. <laughs> but um, no, I I, I mean, there, there was there was there was a few guys. No, I mean, um, I mean, I played in midfield with Lawsy as well and stuff like that, but. I'd definitely probably say Dino because I knew Dino always had my back as well. Yeah. So he did. And um, he knew I had his back. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much uh, sort of football you see these days, but is there anyone who you sort of see in today's game who you'd say like has similar attributes to yourself? Not really, because I don't think it's allowed anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't. I mean, um, uh, I, I wouldn't say that because I, 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 I don't want to be... Uh, facetious in a way of saying who I think I played like or who could play like me. Um, I think I was my own individual uh, player. I mean, I, I thought I could uh, make teams panic in the way I used to be able to get around players and stuff. But um, I wouldn't I would like to say who I think this day and age because I think the game's a completely, completely different game. I mean, I mean the fitness level is incredible. Um, it's, it's just... Uh, it's just a different ball game altogether today. So, no, I, I, I don't really, no, I don't think I can have that one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, like, looking at back uh, sort of in your day as well, is there anyone in your day or now who you'd love to have played alongside in, in midfield? So, one of the best midfield players at Middlesbrough, and I never ever got to play that much with him because he moved on. And he's still my favourite Middlesbrough player, by the way. And it's not Eugenio, it's Heine Otto. I think the guy was... I'm telling you, the guy was like six foot three and he was the most smoothest, silkiest soccer player and the greatest gentleman I ever met. Um, I mean, I wish I'd had time to play behind him more often because I think he was just a wonderful player. So I do. Um, but uh, what was the question you asked me? I meant to go back and tell you about that, about Heine. Yeah, it was just about, uh, is, was there any sort of midfielder you would, would like to have played with either in your day or even like current midfielders? No, that would have been Heine. Uh, Heine. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, Heine all. So it would have been. Um, anybody else? No. I, I, Heine just had, he had a special gift. He used to just glide across the ground. And back in them days, there used to be 10 inches of mud. And Heine just used to make it look so simple just to get around the field. And uh, his technical ability was fantastic. No wonder he went back to Ajax and worked all them years with them again. I mean, he was... Um, Wonder, he was a wonderful football player. He really was. Yeah, I think the Dutch players had that little bit of a silky skill about them, didn't they? They did. Well, I don't know, because Big Billy Ashcroft came from them as well. And Big oh, Bill yeah. didn't. 
he maybe he was after foot came from well he went to FC Twenty didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he did. What a great man he was. I was I was Bill's apprentice at one point. He used to send me for a, a pack of cigarettes every morning. Hey, anyway, how the how the game has changed, eh? <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. I've had him on my podcast as well. I had a great chat with him. Yeah, he's a he's a great guy. Oh, I know he's brilliant. I keep uh, I say hello to him now and again on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, like as we sort of alluded to a little bit earlier on, like the things are different these days to, as to what they were sort of back in the day. And obviously now more than ever, nutrition and fitness is sort of in the game these days, and like physical well-being and things like that. What was the sort of training like in your day? Obviously, there was the nutritionists and things that aren't supposed to would have been in them days. No. No, the nutritionist. You were told just to be careful what to eat, but not like. I mean, these players go to the training ground and they're basically fed there. Yeah. I mean, so you're having to eat to what the, their plan is, which is a good thing. I mean, it's a really good thing that obviously keeps everybody in the same balance of what nutrition's going down in the systems and stuff. But no, not nowadays. No, it was uh, just do you want. I think the guys who were probably the ones in the best shape are the ones who were married. Because they would have their wives cook for them and stuff. The single guys, now they just went and just did what they wanted to do. Yeah, it was like back in the days. They sort of used to go to the, the pub with the, the fans and that didn't they celebrate after the games. And that was one. That's one. That's one thing I think is probably missed though. I mean, yeah, yeah, because I mean, I think back in them days, I I don't know it can be done now because football football players they say sadly. I mean, I'm not going to say sadly. Football players are under such scrutiny now. But when you're getting paid what they're getting paid, that all comes with a price, and that's the price of getting paid that money. So, I mean, you, you've either got to just suck it up and abide by the rules and don't do not do stupid things, because, my God, it's like every year you hear football players just doing silly things, and, I mean, they've just got to act a little bit more maturely and stuff like that, just stay out of the limelight. And I know it must be hard, because there's eyes and ears on them everywhere they walk. Yeah. yeah, and just a, sort of another thing, touching on the sort of physical and, and a bit of a mental side, I suppose, as well. It's obviously important to be at your best and, you know, have the best chance of success in sport and in life. And obviously, things were a little bit different in your day. Was there, was there anyone at the club in your days who you could speak to if you were struggling with things at home or off the field? Not really. It was just always the coaches and stuff. Yeah. I mean, they, and they were good at that. And that, that's what makes them managers, like, pretty special back then because they were like they had to play multiple different roles they were the team psychologist they were the team psychiatrist I mean like Bruce and Toddy I mean they had a good relationship because if you thought if you thought it was something Bruce was going to say no to you which was probably 90% of the things anyway then you would go to Toddy yeah and then and if Toddy thought you had a chance of whatever you were requesting or asking then Tori would go to Bruce with it and then he would get back to you. So it was a good little system that they had uh, within the club. Maybe that good cop, bad cop kind of uh, relationship with Toddy and Bruce. But um, yeah, you got to admire them managers back then because they had a lot on the play. They really did earn whatever money they earned. Because in today's game, I mean, the 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 true athlete, they're athletes. They have to be athletes. I mean, that's just a given. But uh, managers themselves, um, I mean, do all the coaching and, and they've got all these different staff coaches. They're becoming like American football teams. They have coaches for everything, like defensive coaches, attacking coaches and all this stuff. Yeah. Back in the day, they didn't have all that. But one thing that the managers that today have to deal with is coaching soccer players' egos. Because yeah, that... Done, I truly believe, I mean, because of what you already have, you have a, a gifted soccer player, you have a pure thoroughbred athlete. Now it's all about the mental side. It's all about their mental approach and their mental attitude. And to keep 40 of them in check, oh my God, that's not a day's work, that's a year's work. Yeah. And they've got to do that on a daily basis. I mean, because like I said way back in the start of the podcast that, I mean, players can make a break, you know. Back in the day, it wasn't that. It wasn't that way. I mean, if you if you were a loud mouth or you were trying to disrupt the the dressing room or whatever, you'd just be gone. Now nowadays, it's no managers out, new new manager in. Yeah, definitely. 
Uh, yeah, so I just want to, I, I always like to sort of finish on a bit of a light-hearted note with a few little sort of quick fire questions at the end. So I'll just move on to these last couple of questions. And uh, anyway, th thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. No problem. So anyway, like I say, pineapple on pizza, would you say yes or no? Say that again? Pineapple on pizza, do you say yes or no to that one? A pie, a pie in a what? Pi pineapple, sorry, pineapple on pizza, do you say it's, no, right no. Or it's wrong? No, no, it's not it's wrong. Yeah. And uh, another one, tea bag. Do you put the tea bag in the milk in in the cup first, or do you put the milk in first? Tea bag. Yeah, same as me. Um, and but sort of going back onto the meal side of things, uh, would you say your favourite meat on your meal would be chicken or turkey? What would you go for? Chicken. Chicken, yeah. And Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi? Messi, hands down. <laughs> Yep, same for me. Um, another one, match of the day or I'm a celebrity? Get the right one. Oh, for, match of the day, I'm a celebrity. Man. I, don't, I don't watch any of that shit. No, I can't stand it when my wife and my kids want to watch that and then I'm like, I'm oh. always in a different room watching something. No, I'm, we're watching our kids don't even watch either because they've grown adults as well. <laughs> yeah, well, my eldest is only 18 and my young ones are a little bit younger, so <laughs> they'll watch that, I watch football. Yeah, we've just got to continue. We've just got to continue with the grandkids now, that's all. We've yeah. got all to come back around again. Yeah. And the uh, the final question, if you had the opportunity to go back in time to when you were playing and change one of the following things, either having a longer career and making a record number of appearances or more success in terms of sort of like reaching cup finals and winning trophies, but obviously having another short career, which one would you choose? First one. <clears throat> First one, yeah. Yeah, obviously, because your sort of career was a little bit cut short, wasn't it? So it would be always nice. It was. Yeah. It was, when you think about it, though, I played my last game at 23. I think I played like 270 games. And yeah. I've, I've, I've sat, and you wouldn't be human if you didn't sit and think about it. I mean, you wouldn't. Yeah. Just human nature. And I've sat and thought, well, if I played another five, just another five years or six years, I'd have been in the 500s. Made a lot which would have taken me. And I, and I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm a big Middlesbrough fan. I look and see who's who has the most appearances and stuff. And But that's all it, isn't it? And um Aye. It's not going, but it, it, but no, I'd definitely have. That would be something I would have liked to have done. <laughs> yeah, like you say, you still definitely had a great career, and I'd just like to say thank you for being on the show today. I appreciate your time, and it was great to hear you about your career and your get a great insight of your career and someone who played at like the top level in football. So I'd just like to say all the best. Thank you very much for taking part today. No, no problem. Thank you very much for the invite. Sorry, it's taken so long to get this done. No problem. Like I say, it's been a great pleasure, man, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. All the best, mate. Bye. Thank you. Bye.